YouTube is always the last because I gotta click a button and then it takes its sweet time to do it. It is going live. Okay. okay. I believe we are on right. a We up and then running? Yep. All right, welcome everyone to the 034 Motorsport Live. Uh, the Zero bullshit Q and A. That's our new. <laughs> apparently, we got a new tagline. Our new branding. Um, I, I still like the other one. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> Vag Talk was in close uh, consideration, but um, in writing, it just looked too much like Vagina Talk. So, uh, and even though we do enjoy discussing vaginas here on um, the Zero Bullshit Q and A, <laughs> yeah, zero through four more sports, Zero bull Bullshit Q and A. Um, it would, wouldn't be accurate to say that it's all vaginas all the time, but it's always no BS. So we here we are. for no BS. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I'm Javad Shadzi. This is Nate Stewart. We're here to answer all your hot and burning questions about everything 034. Um, as uh, as our new name indicates, we take a no, no BS approach to responding, and um, we just like to talk about what's really going on. Sometimes that's offensive to some people. We're truly sorry about that. Um, put your questions in the browser of your choice, and uh, we will answer them to the best of our ability in the order that they come in. Um, if you're just here to troll, we pretty much stopped. Yeah. Because it's if just you're trolls feeding trolls. If you're a troll, you should really, like, reevaluate your life. <laughs> Find uh, a better hobby. And try to figure out what's wrong with you. But uh, any kind of legitimate criticisms, any kind of Absolutely. substantive um, critiques or questions, feedback, questions, feedback, you're upset about something, absolutely let us know about that. Um, trolling implies that there's just no, no, there's no winning. That You've already stated your answer. Basically. You're just trying to be a destructive presence and we're not interested in that. Uh, Chris Murphy says, Nate's beard is zero bullshit. Hey, oh, yeah. there we go. Um, all right. Um, let's, oh, and then uh, update questions, you know, as, as per usual, we're shying away from those so we can get to all the actual questions. But if there's anything we can offer, you know, we'll try. Um, do you offer lowering springs for the Mark A GTI? I'm not seeing on the seeing them on the website. Are they the same as the Mark Seven? Um, we will be. Uh, we're finalizing them now. We've we've taken some extra time to really get them perfect, um, and I think um, they'll be worth the wait. But they're not available. Um, the Marks we we did not deem the Mark Seven ones a compatible fit. Although I understand other companies are offering their Mark Seven springs for the Mark Eight. So. Early on, we drove some, some like that, and they were they rode terribly, did not perform well. So, um, hang in there. The GTI springs are coming. We did release the Golf R ones a while ago, so it's not like we haven't been working on it. Mm -hmm. um, but what I need to order to tune my manual Mark A GTI, I'll need the ECU software, the cable, and anything else. Uh, that is it to get started. Yeah, um, for yeah stage just, you'll need the flashing dongle, and um, yeah, you know, just uh, select what tune you're looking for off the website, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, it can all be done through right through your phone or your PC or however you would like to flash it, and we can get a load of it. Yeah. Looking at the front diff insert for the 5.2 manual RA, what is the true benefit? I'm looking for crisper shifts like your transmission mount insert. Well, on the, on the RA, we we did a full development effort on that and um we did um create the the front diff insert uh for those vehicles there is some movement in the front diff insert and so when you shift and that power is transferred to the front diff uh, there can be some uh, movement or compliance where the power or energy from the drive line goes to loading up that mount instead of delivering power and torque to the, to the tires so yes, you will. You will. The idea is is to feel uh, better shifts, uh, better transfer of power on and off power. Um, the the thing is on the R8, you're not transferring a lot of power through the front diff. I think it's like up to 20, 30 percent. So yeah, so you're, you're gonna it's, it's you're gonna notice a proportion difference. Thankfully, the modification is not very expensive. I think it's a no brainer um, to do. 
I don't think you'll feel a world of difference, but you, it it does definitely reduce that loading up of, of that particular mount. And um, that only helps deliver the power and shifts better. Um, if, if you have an R8, uh, definitely check out our sway bars. Um, I, there's not enough people have bought those. I think the R8 is an interesting market. I think people think it's already the best performing it can be. And while it's incredibly performing, it's a good especially for, for a stock Audi, uh, we, we did make some huge improvements to it. The sway bars are a big one. Our springs are, our, our springs and sway bars combined together. Um, and I, you probably already have wheels, but our Ford ZTF wheels, you can put a lot of rubber under that car. Um, so the combination of the, the sway bars, the springs, and the wheels and tires, it's a, it, it does really transform their car. Um, a lot of update questions. A lot of 4.0T. A lot of people are asking if we're, if we're going to be doing 4.0T um, for C7. Um, and yes, we, we are slowly working on it. It's not a top priority for us, given the fact that there's already a lot of tuning out there and we're, we're very late to the party on that one, but we are working on some, some, mm -hmm. uh, some tunes for the C7 4.0T. Um, but nothing real specific. Um, it's not like we're releasing one next week. Or right. Uh, and then we're also looking at the C8 as well. Similar situation. <clears throat> Uh, when I spoke to some of the guys at Euro Tuning Open House, they did hint at a new C7 4.0T intake coming soon. Yes, that's true. That's a really cool intake. We we made a custom one-off filter for it, just the biggest filter we could fit, and has two two inlets um, outlets. So that that's coming. Um, I'd say in the next few months. Uh, I love. I love the file on my car. I just want the 034 sticker. Could I get one? Yes. Yeah, so shoot us an email, sales at 034motorsport.com. Uh, we'll be happy to send you a sticker. You can also buy them um, with free shipping. I think it's $4 pair. For the little ones. Yeah. The little ones. The, the little bigger ones. they are. Like, we, we have bigger ones yeah. too. But the, the little ones are $4 shipped for two little ones. I recently saw like a decal at a coffee shop. I was like, oh, that's a cool decal. And, like one little decal was $8. Wow. It's like, oh, I represent your coffee. I'm not buying that. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the, the coffee was $16. So I was wow. wondering what their price was. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Immediate <laughs> instantaneous delivery. We can't offer that. No. Maybe. 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 Um, should I copper spray 034 MLS head gasket 3.2 supercharged? Um, I, I don't recommend it. Uh, you don't need to. It's not designed to. Those copper sprays um, are for gaskets that don't have kind of a sticky sealing surface. And so that head gasket has a butyl rubber sealing layer that's already applied to the gasket, inner, you know, metal gasket. Um, substrate so it's designed to seal just the way it is um there's really no benefit to adding the copper spray in fact the copper spray could could um uh it, it could actually interfere with the natural how, how it's naturally designed to seal those copper sprays are like in in there's cases where you have copper head gaskets was so it just a, a piece of laser cut copper uh, and then the copper itself has no sealing property so that's where you do the copper spray on there. I've seen um, some pretty janky applications where like, it's like a Chevy 350 something or other and like they're shitty paper gaskets and they leak really easily. And so people spray them with copper first, but you, you don't, you shouldn't need to on, on a high performance gasket like the ones we, we have for. Um, what wheels do you recommend for the lightest application in a B9.5 RS5? Um, our 20 by 10 forged wheels you know, with a 285 or 295. Is that this one? No, yeah, it's this one right here. Oh, okay. Let's grab one of those. Let's... Well, this is very light. 
Yeah, you're freakishly strong. Yeah, well, I'm also very strong. No, I don't. I don't know what these were, but they're. I mean, it's, it's about as light as you can get while not being super bendy and, and flexy. Um, or you could run a run our nineteen by nine point three um, ET thirty eight with a two eighty five. That would be even lighter. Um, but this this I think is a is going to be a better setup. Yeah, uh, and a little extra weight will be worth it to get a really nice big contact match. It's still way lighter than stock. Extra weight compared to the nineteen, but yeah, or nineteen. It's still, it's still much lighter than stock. Yeah. yeah, if I remember, I think those are twenty two or twenty three pounds. I mean, they're. they're Compared to, I don't know what the factory wheel is. Probably like 30. I believe it's lighter than the flow form a little bit. Um, we have a lot of questions coming, guys. So we're trying to fill Is there a product for the B9 Audi RS5 that you currently don't offer, but personally think would be a good addition to your range? Well, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Um, yeah, I mean, we we have we have products in in the works for the B nine RS five, and this question that you asked us is the is the type of question we ask ourselves every day when uh, we're thinking about what new what new uh, products to offer. So, um, I'm I'm not coming up with anything real. Not that we aren't like working on or working yeah. towards. Yeah, this could be a really clever update. It's, yeah, it's just disguised. Yeah. Um, no, they're they're. Fantastic cars. We've got a lot of stuff in the works, both hardware and software coming. Someone's asking about our 4 MQ7 supercharged tunes. Those are coming. Yep. Um, we're wrapping up some of the flashing protocols for those right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's like I said. I, I like I always say. I've, I've been driving on these tunes for months now, um, put tens of thousands of miles. Well, probably ten to twenty thousand miles. Yep. On on uh, the various. Stage one eighty five and stage one ninety one, which I really like that file. Yeah. Honestly, that's a really nice. It's just how the car should be. Um, can we clear out some of those four point two questions? I thought interesting. There's the top update question. And isn't that that cash can question from last week? No, no. I swear it was from last week. Someone's asking if we can make our new DSG catch can work on the Mark 8 DQ 381. Uh, I don't believe so. Yeah. What What's the Mark 8 DQ 3? What's What's that? Hmm? The transmission. The DS, no, the, no, I know, but which, the, isn't that the, GTI 8 or IS3? Uh, oh, we three. don't we don't currently have an offer. Not, not a catch can for either now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, if there's demand for that, we will we will work on one. For yeah, that. we haven't had an issue with those at this point. So. Yeah, I've been wanting an intake system for my B8S4, but yours has always been out of stock. All right, but here's the deal: we ship them every week. Um, they're just never in stock, but we're shipping them. So what this means is you have to get in your order because we can't make them fast enough to keep up with the demand. We're trying. Um, but if you put in an order, I guarantee you, you'll get a, you'll get a B8 intake shipped to you. Um, now, so, someone just is saying here, we currently have 50 in stock. You just you just verified that? Oh, you, I verified it with your picture last week. Okay. For B8S4. B8S4. Yes. Yeah. Photo that. Okay. So okay. Cool. All right. So we have 50 in stock, buddy. Go. <laughs> Now's the time. But uh, I... I, I before, so I, I saw a bunch of intakes out there. I didn't know they were the BS4. Before that, though, we haven't been in stock, but we have been shipping them. You know? So we get materials in, we make them, but they were always sold out. So a, a lot of the times with these products, um, if you want to buy it in stock, you're probably never going to get it. Although apparently today that's not true. Um, but, um, you know, the best way to get some of these products, you just push in, put in an order and they, you can email our customer service and ask what the lead time is, but it's not like we haven't had these in stock for a year. We, 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 we do, they come in stock and we yeah, ship them. People, to are, people, get, who people are getting them, but you got to get in line. So since we're talking about it, some cool things, uh, it is, it is carb EO'd. Um, it has a very high quality 
real carbon fiber shield. Uh, it comes with a huge super duper filter on it, which is what people want. So, oh. Uh, it, this is the large filter, and we do offer a super duper as well. Yeah. Um, but this is this is a huge filter. What, what's the flow in this intake? Uh, we never flow tested. Yeah, we flow tested. No, I don't know. Sure. Is that the same outside? Like no. Um, I, I we flowed this four inch filter a number of times. It flows like a thousand CFI, which is a lot. Um. <laughs> And then this this intake will support our super duper uh, throttle body setup as well, and virtually no filter shrouding, lots of space all around the filter for air to flow. Uh, and then it does get nice cool air from the front of the car. With the hood shut, it's basically a closed intake, and again, all the cold air you can want. Um. I was asking about, I'm, I'm going to let this one through because I know it's something we have coming. Uh -oh. What updates tunes coming to the CREC motor 2016 yep. A6 this summer? Yeah, so it's the late A6s and then European, the late uh, S4s, S5s also got this motor. Um, so we have a whole slew of updates that are very near uh, release. So you'll see uh, some update, updates to those pages. Um, you know, I don't think we've talked about how we're going to like release that. Yeah. Because it's not a new product release; it's an update to some some files. We just have spent a bunch of time and and uh, in effort on revising all of those. Um, but yeah, there'll be a lot coming. So we'll have ninety one, ninety three, eighty five for for everything. Um, oh, crap! Those logs. There's a lot of questions. We're multiple pages deep right now. Um. All right. Let's keep moving. Um. It appears R32s are becoming increasingly sought after. Are there any plans for new 034 products with R32 or for yeah, your in general? Oh, that's that's nice try. I wish. No, we've moved on from from that. Um, I, I think the cars are getting more valuable, but that's, but that also means that people don't want to do it. Just to see, that's usually yeah. a problem. That usually means the yeah. the modifications are less uh, desirable. You want like a pristine factory example is where people start uh, going when cars become. Uh, yeah sought after for, to be, for the yeah. car. When, when the modification market really opens up is when cars get cheap. Yeah. You know, so you see a, see a car go from 45,000 to 15,000 and all of a sudden people are willing to like rip the motor apart and do it. Well, yeah. Things. And especially if it's got a bunch of like tuning potential where it's this, you know, yes. turbo motor or something where you can, you know, right. relatively inexpensively double, you know, the output on it. Uh, will there be an update to the DL 501 R? 2.0.4 <laughs> climax. Uh, yes, we have we have we have a bunch of updates coming. We're kind of we're just letting the the uh, the feedback uh, settle at this point. And uh, yeah, so there's there's no need for us to rush out an update. Um, there there is some you know superficial drivability concerns or desires um, for how the transmission shifts. Um, there's nothing related to safety, performance, or function with yeah. any of this. So um, you don't need to flash back to an older version. You don't need to be worried about um, that the hard shift is bad for the transmission. It's not. The transmission doesn't care uh, within reason how fast it shifts. This is this is mostly to keep you know our uh, soft and fragile human bodies you know comfortable uh, during the shift. So um, we we've we've been working on this every day. We've received a lot of feedback, and we mm -hmm. continue to seek out feedback with. Our beta testers and other customers too. Um, I, I, I think you know more and more. We're finding that you know there's some expectations around this. Where if the transmission shifts nice and smooth once, the expectation is it should always shift like that. And these DSGs, even stock from the factory, don't always shift exactly the same in similar conditions. Um, the, the TCU uh, is is crunching a lot of really calculate uh, complex calculations to figure out when to shift, how to shift, how fast to shift, how much torque to deliver during the shift, and that means that with all the the variables and the relative intelligence of the ECU, that it it can make decisions that aren't always consistent. In fact, the dumber a TCU is. More consistent. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of uh, predictive driving maps and stuff in there. So yeah. depending on how you're, like the the rate of pedal uh, angle change, um, 
RPMs, where you're at in different points and, and steering angle complaint effects. So there's a lot of stuff that goes in there so that, you know, it'll try and preemptively figure out what you're looking for in the next yeah. shift. So. But, but I, I think we will end up releasing a final revision, at least for now. And then yeah. telling everyone that um, the transmission be open to it, deciding to shift a little differently sometimes. And that's outside of what we can do in the calibration without removing functionality. I mean, we could. Well, it depends. I, the, yeah, the yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything. I mean, yeah, there's going to be some different shift characteristics from time to time, but it's all, yeah, you know, within the mapping, within. The, exactly. It's, it's all, yeah. it's all. You know, it's it's supposed to in, shift in that a way, controlled manner, yeah. But if the idea that it always shifts exactly the same isn't going to hold up in reality, because the TCU will once in a while decide to shift a little differently. Yeah, I mean it'll do it'll do it exactly the same if you're doing things exactly the same. But we're terrible at doing things exactly. The same. Well, if, if, if you think you are, you're not. if you think you are, you're likely not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so you could log it to, to see. Yeah, the, yeah, and we, people, yeah, we get a lot of logs in where people are like I did two runs back to back. They're exactly the same, and it's like a thirty percent difference in pedal yeah. angle or something like that. It's it's uh, yeah, the, the the body's not great at precise. Yeah. Uh, repetitive motions i just know for years like i complained about factory dsg tunes after coming from the manual world because of the inconsistency of shifting and the newer transmissions have gotten better but the b8 is still an older generation uh, compared to some of the new stuff out now so anyways uh th that's where we're at with that and again there's no safety concern yeah it's... but i i've gone out trying to feel this like harsh three four shift and it's not harsh every time. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Um, so there, there is going to need to be some adjustments to expectations as well. Um, most six-cylinder Audi engines don't have a recirculation catch can. Is that due to market or mechanical reasons? A lot of it has to do with packaging. The V6 motors are typically packaged very tightly, and there's just not a lot of room for a catch can. The, the other side of it is a lot of times the V6 motors don't need it. Um, because they do a better job compared to the four cylinders. Um, in the case of the B9 3.0T, we will be releasing one soon, and those do do need it, and, and th it does help them. But um, the 27T was tight, packaged very tight. The B8, uh, we've been working on one for a while, but it's also very tight packaging, so you just kind of run out of places to put it. Yeah, that doesn't become an absolute nightmare to either yeah. maintain or install. And, and given the fact that it's not puking oil they're, they're out of nowhere, like the four cylinders can, then it's just, yeah, let's just move on to other stuff. Um, octane rating at high altitude, Colorado only sells 91. I've seen info that 91 is the same as 93 at sea level due to less oxygen. Is it okay to run a 0 through 4 stage 2 to 93 map on? 91 gas at high altitude. Yeah, no, that's not really a thing. The ECU is going to account for all of that yeah. in, in, you know, it's got barometric pressure sensors. It's got, obviously, it's reading the manifold pressure. It knows the pre-throttle body pressure, the post-throttle body pressure. You know, it's got all the sensors it needs to to account for the altitude changes. So if this were like an old carbureted car or something with a static timing map or something like that, yeah. maybe you can get away with that just because your, yeah, your, your cylinder pressure is going to be lower at altitude. Um, that's yeah. It's not really the case with with modern, especially forced induction makers. Yeah, it's it's a good. I I mean, it's I, I get where this thought comes from, yeah. but like Nate says, the ECU knows you're at high altitude. So if there's additional timing that can be taken advantage of, the ECU are is already doing. That. Yeah, it'd be the same thing if you know cold weather. Your 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 barometric pressure and your um your um you know the air density, not even necessarily the barometric pressure, but the air density getting in is going to be vastly different than if it's a you know yeah. hot day. So the ECU is accounting for all of that. It's also like your body has a metabolism. So whether it's 60 degrees outside or 80 degrees, your body's accounting for that because your body knows how, what the ambient temperature is. So uh, no, just put in your 91, run the 91 map. If there's additional timing uh, window there, the ECU will take advantage, especially with, with well, given knowing that it has that additional that. timing window being, yeah, all the, all the accounting for environmental yeah. conditions. That's right. Um, what, well, oh, we've had this oil, what weight oil do we recommend for an S4 running stage one? B9 S4. Yeah, B9 S4. Um, stock or the SQ5 spec, which is a slightly heavier. Yeah, I think it's 540. Zero I think it's 5W20. Uh, yeah, it's all over. It's 540, I think, I think is what uh, the other one is. It's off the top of my head, though. Yeah. 
Uh, has it been found out if the DQ three eighty one G two holds more torque than the first gen DQ three eighty one? Uh, I haven't seen anything. The mapping is very much identical between them. There's not a lot different. I mean, they they, they both hold a lot of torque. Yeah, no, yeah, they're, they're there's no torque. Quite long, no, we haven't had any issues with them yet. But no, I haven't seen anything firsthand that indicates it's any different mechanically <laughs> in that regard. Um, MQB chassis suspension upgrade upgrade breakdown article from January 2023 mentions extended tie rods coming soon. In order to pair RCO, RCO control arms with RCO ball joints, are they still coming soon? Yeah, um, we they we weren't able to release them as as soon because there were some design considerations that we had to change. Uh, we are currently testing um, production prototypes, and that is something that will be out this year. I'd say this summer. Um, question: I have a B eight point five S four, and I notice I've tried launching at 3.2 and 4,000 RPM, and I notice the car bogs down a sec. Does that mean I'm launching too hard, and how can I find the right launch RPM? Um, I would need to know a little more about what your setup is, what stage tune you're on. If it's a stage one, like 91 octane car, you, you can sometimes launch higher than that. Um, if it's bogging, um, like your your RPMs are dropping, it's 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 not uh, you know just a solid, uh, acceleration off the line generally you need to go up in long in in uh at, at your launch rpm uh what you can do with the advanced launch or you know we've got uh varying stage uh pedal control as well so, um yeah it just may be that you need to hit it a little harder if it's if it's bogging down off the line mm -hmm. but yeah hey. feel, you know feel free to email in too and we can give you a little more specifics on it bigger intercooler solution for b9 uh, like a 3.0 T S4. Yeah. Um, yeah, what we, we use the Wagner intercooler options and which are basically required for stage one, or, I mean, I don't think we list it as they're strongly recommended for stage one and required for stage three. Yeah. Um, yeah, de definitely check out the Wagner stuff. Uh, stage three idle RPM is eight fifty, but before it was five fifty. What is the reason? Five fifty sounds really low. I don't think yeah, that low. it's not. It's I'll say like six fifty to seven hundred. Yeah, seven hundred. Um, it, it we we do that for what the the vibrate some of the vibrations. Sometimes, yeah, a lot of the stuff is upgraded mounts everywhere. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's bigger injectors and all the stage three stuff. Uh, gives yeah, us a little the bigger injectors better. it helps too. Yeah, I mean, cars used to idle at like eight, nine hundred thousand. Oh, a thousand was like the normal target. Yeah, yeah, and they've gotten lower, but but yeah, having a slightly higher idle just just helps smooth out the engine yeah. and give better injector performance. It's for a reason. Um, uh, this is an interesting question: What VAG platform have you guys done the most research developments on? Oh, well, I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years. I could say that we did a ton of development on the B3 so, yeah, going platforms. Back to B2 and B3, so like the Audi 4000 mm -hmm. Quattros. We did a bunch of chassis stuff. 4000, 8090 Coupe Quattro, tons on those. Um, we spent a lot of time and energy on B5. Mm -hmm. We raced B5. Yeah, we did time attack stuff mm -hmm. on B5s with... All kinds of weird motor setups yeah. <laughs> and chassis setups and all different motors. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, when we built GTIRS, we basically cut a Mark IV in half and welded it back together. So we learned a lot about Mark IVs. Of course, we have a whole product line for Mark IVs yeah. as well. Yeah. A lot on the HATTRS, uh, yeah, which we, we, we did racing, uh, several years racing those. Uh, we raced the VLN car and then we raced. Um, some heavily modified uh, cars in for Compass 360 and it's Grand Am. Yeah, we did the uh, Eurotuner GP with ours. Yeah, yeah. We all the Eurotuners gave us extensive experience in R and D on all those. But you know, we have more R and D resources now than we've ever had. Yeah, the, so. the, the speed with which we can do a lot of the stuff yeah. now, we've got you know. So the amount of work we can do the magnitude more uh, more resources. Yeah, the amount of work we can do in the depth we can do 
in a much shorter time than it used to be. You know, it used to be May and I kind of taking years to do something now that can happen in a month or two yep. uh, when you have 10 different people, you know, working on it. So, um, I think, I think we're very well are indeed in the B8. And B9. Yeah. B8, B9 for yeah. sure. We, we spend, you know, a lot of resources there. Um, we also spent a lot on the R8. Yep. Uh, the, yeah, we the went gen one R eights inside front of it. to back through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't, we don't, yeah, there's not a lot where if we're going to do it, we do, you know, we don't go all the way. And it's generally, obviously, as you can tell, it's, it's enthusiast car centric. So we're not out with a lot of, um, you know, base models or the, the, the commuter mode models. We don't have, you know, as de deep of a catalog for stuff like a, like a EOS or a, you know, something like that. But yeah, it's, it's going to be the cars we get to play with. Full bolt-on stage three B5S Ford daily in California or a full bolt-on stage two plus B8 or B8.5S Ford. Rod, which would you choose and mate? Hmm. Oh, if you that's want not a fair question. No. Yeah. I mean, there's a nostalgic part of me yep. that, you know, would love to, you know, spend a couple days driving a B5S Ford at stage three B5S Ford again because... They are really fun, mm -hmm. and um, and it's it's just, it's just, it just That's brings back a lot of memories. Because the transmissions, but um, but I mean the B eight, especially a B eight point five. I mean, drove Sean's last week. It's it's an I mean it's a really nice car. It's so much nicer than a V five, and uh, it's very fast, very comfortable. So I th I think it's it's not a fair question. You know, it's kind of like, you know. They're two different generate like eras of vehicle. Like you know, I mean, the B five is like a it's like a horse and buggy. Like, <laughs> oh man, it'd be great to get behind and yeah. whip the horse and get it to you know turn left and right by pulling yeah. on the reins. Um, but the newer cars are just as far as daily driving, they're just way way more livable and really really fun. Yeah, and you generally will get where you're intended on going. Uh, each yeah. time you set out is is also a, a nicety. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure. If if this question is just for for fun to hear what we say, then sure, good yeah. question. If it's, I, I, I guess if if there's a bigger decision being driven by the response, I'd, <laughs> I'd love to hear what that is. No, right, he's got both cars. And you got both. Cars. All right, okay, cool. Yep. Well, I would I would like to have both. Yes, both is the right answer. I want I want that. You're, you're talking to the wrong people for picking yeah. one thing so. because because there are times when when a stage three B five S four is they are mm -hmm. especially with with a rear diff, a good rear diff setup. Yeah. Um, you know, you can toss them around, you can get them to step out and that, that stage three setup is a really nice power plant. I mean, that's, it's perfect. Like KO, KO, factory KO fours are just perfect. It's a really nice miniature. Yeah. No, the B8 steps out sideways. No, the B8 does too. Yeah. No, it does. Sport yes. does wonders. So yeah. But the manual transmission and you know, no, no, it might be a downfall. Yeah. Well, it is, it is certainly its own, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, own characteristic. It's definitely a downfall for daily driving. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, just went with a competitor's tune, unfortunately, for B9A4. Do you offer a rebate for trade-in? Um, yeah, we offer uh, a switching discount. So if you yeah. want to switch to ours, our standard discount is 25% off. There are times when we have done more than that for, for reasons. Mm -hmm. Maybe the A4 would be a good one to consider. Um and that is something we're actively working on. Um, new B9 injectors, how's the progress? Will there be more power on 93? Progress is very good. We're um, currently, we've been testing the injectors and developing some calibrations for them. And we're currently having injectors manufactured to our specifications. Uh, so as far as like what will make more power, I don't know anything you want to say there. Oh, on ninety three. On ninety three. Uh, ninety three doesn't really need a lot. Not really, no. We've got enough there for for sure. Um, we will have ninety three files on these new injectors, yes, uh, but we won't be. Yeah, we're not going to be getting more power out of it. Uh, we've, we've got what we need. There's a lot of questions here, guys. So we're trying to get through. Um, the snow is disappearing, is soon disappearing here in Canada. So our drag racing season is about to start by the end of the month. Is there going to be any new 
products coming before then for my 3.0 T supercharged engine? Oh, we're trying to get a bunch out. Um, we have, I mean, we have a bunch of fueling upgrades in the works. It's likely anything will be ready by then. Um, we are deep in development on some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, drag racing wise, I don't know what you have. So I don't know, you know there's a bunch of stuff you can do. There's, you can get all the way into doing cams and, and whatnot if you want. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you're starting from. New stuff. Yeah, we've, we've, we do have a bunch of hardware coming, but nothing we can give you a timeline on right now. Uh, just for control arms beside the current rebuild kit. Is there anything in the works for an inner bushing option? Spherical men are coming up to be rebuilt. So I'm wondering, yes, we're, we are working on a, a spherical inner bushing, just like similar to what BMWs run from the factory. Uh, Which car is this for? Uh, for any of them. It'll be for all of our yeah. adjustable, our, our B5, B5 through B9. Exactly. I, I missed mine. I had a set of my B8 for a long time. Yeah. Uh, no, they're 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 going to be slick. They're not just going to be like a, a spherical, you know, stuck in to an aluminum housing. They're manufactured spherical um, inner bushings, and uh, the bushings are sized to press into any of our standard arms. Nice. So if you already have our arms, uh, the idea is to make them upgradable. So, um, someone's asking about our piston and rod combo for the B9 platform, and ours are more expensive than a competitor option. So we, we offer real outer rods in our kit and our competitor is, you know, it's a, probably a good rod, but it's a forged Chinese made rod. Um, so it's substantially cheaper. Uh, we are coming with a Chinese rod option as well. Um, that is a lot cheaper, but the Potter rods are forged in the U S machined. I mean, they're, they're literally the best quality. Um, so you, you pay for that. Um, I know some of these Chinese rods, uh, you know, the machinist has to do extra work to make them, um, you know, installable, where the powder stuff just comes perfectly round, perfectly ready to put in. So if you if you want, you know, kind of the best that America has to offer, it's like a Potter Carrillo level, you know, quality rod, then that's, that's what we currently offer. Uh, if you want to save some money and go with the Chinese rod, that's an option that we will have too in the future. Um, I, I can't speak for anyone else's rods, but you know, ours will be manufactured to all of our specifications and tested to withstand. Um, but we're not going to be able to come out with a powder quality rod for less money than that. Yep. Um, is there any way I can clean my engine bay after an extensive oil leak that ran down the engine components to the bottom of the engine bay? Yes, absolutely. Um, you just want to be careful. You know, you don't want to like fully blast your engine with a hose, but you can spot clean. You can get in there with some brushes and a spray bottle, and you can get water in there. Oh yes, yeah. They're not. They're not gonna. You, you just know, don't fall apart flood. with water. You just don't want to. You know, yeah. pumping water like into breathers and into you know, open. Uh, you know, yeah. Inlet and or cavities. Try, try to keep water off electrical connectors. Um, but other other than that, you know, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're there. yeah, they're quite tolerant. But if you're like you're in there with a pressure washer blasting at any electrical yeah. connector in there, it's yeah. gonna get past the rubber seals. They're not they're not made for for that. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would just recommend using a low volume of water. You could use a foaming kind of degreaser, yeah. and then spray that in there. Get in there with a brush. You can buy some toothbrushes. They have engine engine detailing brushes or whatever. And then just lightly rinse that area off. And once you do that, it'll it'll be nice and clean. I know there's people who detail engine bays too, so you might consider something like that. Um, hi guys, I'm on stage one B9 SQ5. Is there a difference on auto drive select? Is there a difference on auto drive select? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, I mean, this is, I'm assuming the, uh, yeah, I mean, there's gonna be comfort. <laughs> Uh, dynamic and, and individual and slash auto, which tries to figure out which one you want to be in. Like this, I spoke of that earlier where the uh, the cars will kind of take in a bunch of uh, pedal inputs, steering angles, rates of changes, and try and figure out, like, do you want to be Mr. Sporty Sport or are you just trying to get to the grocery store and back without uh, waking the kid up? But um, yeah, there's certainly differences. It's going to change uh, shift points, shift uh, speeds typically is going to be one of the most notable things. Uh, pedal angle, pedal or pedal... Uh, 
linearity is going to change. You're going to have a little more uh, go for a given amount of accelerator pedal. Um, those are going to be the big ones. Some cars have uh, adaptive uh, steering uh, uh, feedback um, and or rates on some cars. So yeah, it, um, it certainly changes it. So I'm not sure if you're looking for anything more specific, but there are, it's not a power change. Some people think it is yeah. a, a, a power increase. And on these cars, it is certainly not. It is just a uh, characteristics change. They call it a charisma change. I think we already addressed C Rack earlier. Yep. But yeah, we we have we have some C Rack tuning updates imminent coming down the pipeline. Stay tuned. Um I'm tired of the shitty IE inlet for my B9 3.0T. Do you offer trade in for that garbage? <laughs> Sadly no. Not not our words. Um yeah, no, this is this No, I, I think I think we would be happy to do something for oh. someone with that level of enthusiasm. So well fine. I think about that it. last question is great. Um <laughs> shoot a good. shoot an email to uh, sales. So sales at sales at zero three four motorsport.com. <laughs> Question for the short gray hair guy. Damn. Um, how how many cars have you built personally, and how far have you gotten with them? Where are they now? Same for the tall guy with the beard. <laughs> okay, I'm Javad. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> I'm I'm shortish. I'm five foot eight. But Nate, it's just not fair because Nate's like, what are you like seven feet tall? Uh, minus one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, Nate's, Nate's tall. Um, yeah, so we have both built a lot of cars. Um, I started this company uh, with a car that I built. It's called ADTQ. In mm -hmm. fact, if you'd like to go to the internet and put in 80TQ.com, there's that's still, alive. still a website. Oh yeah, it should be. Um, you you dedicated for that domain. Oh, no, it's down again. Oh, maybe. Oh, 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 I, I think I know. I'm trying to remember now what... There oh, there it is. Okay. www.80tq.com. Now there's going to be broken links on it's, it. It's, a, it's an old... I literally haven't updated it in probably 20 it's years. It's going on 20 years. But um, but that was the car that I, that I built. And um, in, in many ways, I innovated in in an industry that didn't even exist. So, you know. Yeah, vehicle modifications as in, and what... Sure. It was... There was no company building really product that would let you take, there was. especially the Audi Volkswagen lineup, like, and really own and, and and choose your path. You could throw like Tectonics was doing cams for some of the NA stuff. There's like some yeah. some supercharger like turbo or uh, with the turbo lighter kits, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But it was very constrained yeah. in can systems. Yeah. So um, you know, at the time when when I started doing modifications to ADTQ. The Audi tuning industry was well. You take an RS2 this and you bolt it on, and yep. you know you get an MTM Stage One chip. And I mean, there was really basically no modifications other than kind of OEM plus stuff from from Germany. And so you know, I started getting into Audis in like ninety six, ninety seven, and so I joined some of the early email lists. And I would say, you know, how come nobody's run, nobody's built a header? How come nobody's running a Garrett Turbo? How come? Nobody's put EFI on their car. And people literally used to say tell me Gara turbos will not work yeah. on a on a 2.2 turbo. They used to say that the 7A cannot be turbocharged. You cannot put forged internals. There's it just so won't work. much, yeah. So much just um, stuck in the mud. Like, they couldn't think outside of there was a large group of people that. who who said that the AAN 2.2 simply will not run on any other engine management system than factory Motronic 3. Um, that it's if it, it, you can't it you can't like maybe someone had done a Motec because there was like rally cars running on Motec and things like that, um, and so I you know all my friends were doing Hondas were doing turbo kits and EFI. Um, my Mustang friends had like the world at their fingertips, and so I just thought, you know, what if what if if you had an Audi eighty Quattro, what if you could open a catalog and do modifications to your car just like my friends with Hondas and Mustangs and Camaros kind of, you know, and that, that was kind of what inspired me to start zero through four. So yes. Um, you know, I, I brought headers and turbo upgrades and EFI to the Volkswagen Audi market. And I'm one of the people who did that, certainly I think in the Audi market, I am the person who did that. And that's really what started made zero it accessible. Four. Yeah. 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 There, there were people that had done it, but there wasn't a company that had yeah, come was, to market was off and was like, "Hey, you can EFI your car, you can turbo your car, you can put a header." EFI on EFI was car. certainly not a thing. There were it was mm -hmm. the Audi five cylinder in particular was a very difficult motor to to do uh, 
proper standalone engine management all right. the time because all of the players, like the Hall techs, the the the, the Mo techs, the the all of the traditional uh, standalone systems um, simply wouldn't support su support support an odd cylindered motor. Um, yeah. They had no timing right. structures for it. They had no math built in that would let them, uh, you know, just arbitrarily fire yeah. coils and when they needed to. So. So that, that's what I set out to do is to, to develop an EFI system that could that could fire any number of cylinders, including one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, any order, sixteen, how many, many times you wanted. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I mean, you know, so I, I I have built cars and I've wrenched and I've I've done it all. And then we we got into racing. We raced um at bonneville we went to pikes peak we raced in grand am we raced in scca um and you know if you want to go look up our time attack a4 i was heavily involved in that including wrenching designing welding fabricating i used to tune and calibrate all of our vehicles kind of until um nate really took over when we when we moved off our standalone system yeah um, i chose not to really get too involved in the oem calibration effort and i just let nate take that on because i was managing the rest of the company yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> i used to drive the cars you know um one of the fastest drag racing times we've ever run i was behind the wheel um so yeah um i don't get as involved anymore because i have a really good team of people and um, the best thing that i can do is is to be at a higher level thinking you know guiding the the path that the company's taking um, uh, and same with Nate. I mean, Nate's not yep. getting in there, getting his hands dirty either. He's overseeing our calibration and tuning effort, which is a really expansive and really yeah. complicated part of the company. Um, so I, I really don't work on cars anymore and I don't care to, but I have built dozens and dozens of cars and I have a lifetime worth of wrenching yeah. experience yeah, yeah. that, that, uh, that's all, that's all I needed to do to know what I know now. So yeah. now on these lives, I mean, I, I always kind of am amused by the fact that there's almost anything that you guys can ask Nate and I, and we, we always have a response because, because of the time we spent, um, you know, in the trenches, as they say, yeah. Yeah. Do, doing all that. Yeah, I did. Actually, I, I had a very similar path where, you know, it was Audi 5,000s and 4,000s. I was swapping motors in. Uh, similarly, yeah, I did putting EFI onto these old five cylinders. And then eventually I was one of the first, if not the first, at least the first to like document it really. Uh, yeah. I put a V8 into an Audi 90. So I had an older Audi. I think, V8. I think it was one of the first. I, I don't think know there may have been first. like one guy somewhere on the internet that did it and kind of wrote, wrote some stuff. Uh, but yeah, you were the first to make it. It just, yeah, showed how I made all the mounts and how everything yeah. fit, worked and, mm -hmm. and what parts were needed to do what. So yeah, I had a V8 and a 90 and then I decided twin turbocharging. That was a good idea. Um, I blew up several of those and various drivetrain components along the way. That car, yeah, ended up with a later motor V8 in it, got with factory management because I was starting to get into that. So I, a lot of the stuff in my personal projects, I would take things I was trying to, you know, or I was working on learning or dealing uh, uh, dealing with at work and move it to the personal side as well. So just need more exposure and just embedded in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that went back to a factory management system that was all custom tuned and that got sold to some guy in the Northwest. I don't know where it's at now. Mm -hmm. About the same thing, the Coupe Quattro turbo kit in the 7A. And yeah, just a whole pile of cars. That and actually, early on, on. When, when we started 034, early on, you know, Nate and I would build cars for customers. You know? So we would, yeah. We yeah, would we'd be did, in there doing work. Yep. yep. You know, so, you know, until, until we hired our first mechanic and stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge part of, of what you benefit from as a customer at zero through four is that Nate and I are, we're not posers. We're, we're the real deal. We've, we've been there and done all the wrenching and we actually know what we're talking about. Thanks to all of our experience. Yeah. And that's always been my philosophy is, you know, to, to get involved and learn by doing not necessarily, you know, from my ivory, ivory tower. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's astonishing too. Like, I don't know if I, if... <clears throat> If you're new to the industry or new to tuning or new to cars, like you got no idea how good you got it <laughs> right now with with the mm -hmm. with the with the accessibility and the um, you yeah. know the the potential that that uh, can be unlocked with minor modifications yeah. and just the speeds and the the performance that 
is just unheard. Yeah. It would have been unheard of not not very long ago. No, in in the late nineties, any of these questions, the answer would have been no. You can't do that. No, don't do that. Don't don't modify the car. Yeah. It won't work. You can't do it. Yeah. It's like, well, why not? Porsche designed a turbo for the Audi five cylinder. They're the only ones that can do it. It's ridiculous. So, um, and a lot of those people really didn't like me when I. When I started popular, like, I, like, I was like, hey, it's... look, I made 400 wheel with a Garrett Turbo and a header and an that EFI. Was, and people were just like, oh, it must drive like shit. Like, it drives better than your ass. We that turbo lag, and then you overlay the dynos. Yeah. And it's like 100 horsepower up everywhere because it's an actual free flowing yeah. motor. With it was years of just being told, no, you can't do that. And just doing it anyway. So I, I always try to think, what's the new version of that? What is the new thing? So that I don't fall in that trap. I don't want to be the one saying, oh, you can't do that. And then someone goes off and do it, right. does it. So that's why you always see us. I think we said no to like airbags and stanced stuff. <laughs> but, oh, that was <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, that's, that's not going to be so many though. people asking for that. Cause we were doing not a lot of suspension stuff that people would use for those, we were Air just, you know, spherical rear control yeah. arms and things. And that they, kind would, of came. they would use a lot of our components for those and they wanted more customized, you know, airbaggable things. All right. Let's pound through some more stuff here. Okay, um, hi team, I have a 2021 RS5 that I frequently have serviced at your San Jose location. Thank you. And it just hits 71,000 miles. Should I keep this car or get a low, lower mileage car? I mean, there's no reason to get rid of the car unless I would say the interior or paint and body are kind of like not as good as you'd like anymore. My S4 is getting so ready. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong mechanically with a 71,000 mile car. Um, you know, it, it, and and it's, it's still, probably it's still a, a young car too. Like yeah, I mean, it's I'm probably assuming. just a lot of freeway yeah. miles. Yeah, just cruising, which aren't hard on the car. The car is just literally like it's yeah. like if you're sitting at your desk, you know, during a lecture in college. Like that's the kind. You know, it's just not hard on your body. Um, so. Um, but it's it's up to you. If you want to get into a newer car, I don't know if the 2024 model has some stuff that you want, and you know, but uh, you're gonna you're obviously gonna pay a huge price yeah. to do that. Yeah. Right. So yes, you have to ask yourself: Is it worth thirty thousand dollars or whatever? Yeah, I mean we're 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 never sticklers for like a mileage ends a vehicle's like feasibility or anything like that. These things, I mean, well maintained, especially you know the history on it, you know all the ins and outs. So it's a it's a known quantity. Um, anytime you get into something else, you'd be it brand new. It's going to take some figuring out to see what you got. Uh, I just want to know if you still have plans for a factory Cadillac converter stage three Mark A GTI tune, or if mm -hmm. I should stop waiting and scratch that plan. Uh, we do. Yes. Um, I yeah, need to go through and finalize probably, some things on that, but our yeah. goal, our goal is to have factory cat <laughs> files for all of our yeah. big turbos. Yeah, and, and on that, on that platform, the stock cat is solid. Like it's, it's a good, it's a good flying cat. Good flying actually. Flying. And yeah, we've actually struggled to find the flow benefits of a racing cat. So. Yep. No, and that's it's becoming more and more of a thing too that the factory cats yeah, just keep flowing. Really back. good problem. Even though the emission standards are getting more strict, it's just interesting. I think 10, 20 years ago, a lot of people were like, you know, predicting the death of automotive ice performance, and it. The death will probably come from electrification, if anything, but it's not from catalytic converters. No, no, the, yeah, the, the engineering and and just you know, the the institutional knowledge, of course, keeps getting built every year. Yeah. Um, but the stuff that that we're able to do now with these ice motors is also. Did, phenomenal. did you hear that there is a record number of honeybees now in the U.S.? I do. Yeah. Is this a weird analogy, or are we actually talking bees? Well, no. I mean, this is similar. I think you know, ten years ago. Many people predicted like human extinction because of there, I know there was a bunch of honeybee bee populations bee collapsing, collapsing yeah. and, and they did hit a low point in like 2006. But humans responded, and um, record numbers of honeybee farm farms came up, and um, so in a census this past year, uh, whatever organization counted more honeybees than ever in the history of, of the count. So it, it's just, the, I'm trying to try to make the point. Humans are really good at um, innovating and we create a lot of problems, but we're also good at solving them, which is why we're still here. Uh, and I think, you know, circle back, like, that's the same thing with emissions technology. Emissions hasn't stopped cars from being fast. In fact, the fastest cars ever made 
are being made right now with the most strict emission standards. Yep. So may, maybe we shouldn't freak out so much when it comes to like you know, breathing clean air. Mm -hmm. Um, I drove my car the other day and hit the gas, got it up to 100. Then my EPC light came on with the engine speed limitation light as well. Do you know what can trigger that? A lot of different things. You you should check whatever fault codes that will have been stored from that event and contact us. We can help you figure out. It may just be you know, old coils, could be you know any number of things. Generally, that's a, a misfire event if I had to guess, but... You can contact us for some logging. It could be a yeah. boost leak. It could be, I don't know what car this is even on. So there's literally hundreds of things it could be. Summer is coming. Any plans for improved cooling mods to accommodate the B9, B9.5, Stage 3, TT, EA10 setup? Yes, we are We are actively working on that. Um, we're working on bigger um, radiators with, with more cooling capacity. Um, the main radiator upgrade doesn't give quite as much cooling as we had hoped. However, I think it's in the 15 to 20% range. But then if, if um, you add it to the upgraded auxiliary cooler, which adds, and then if we can add the R, like a RS5 style to the other side, we start getting up there uh, making some good improvements. So yeah, it's, it's in the works. Um, would B9 heads benefit from a full port and polish even on stock bottom end? Okay, so there's no such thing as a full port and polish. There's there's a myriad of port and polish outcomes that range from worse flow to probably slightly better. You, you can remove a lot of material and have a far less, uh, yeah. you know, performing head. Yeah, so it, the, the question is, would an optimized port and polish that flows more than stock provide a benefit? And the answer is, yeah, probably. It would probably make a, a little bit more power as a function of how much better it flowed, um, especially if the flow improvement was at all areas of lift and not just at max lift, right? Um, it doesn't help to just increase the flow at max lift if you can't increase it at partial lift because most of the time air, that air is flowing into the combustion chamber, it's not at max lift. It's at partial lift. So um, now what I say, do I think it's worth it? No, I don't think it's worth it. It's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to do this with probably a minimal benefit that could easily be, you know, you could easily make that kind of power doing a different, it's much more accessible mode. Yeah. You know, running E85 or E60 or something like that. So uh, in general, we haven't seen a, a big need for, porting and, and head flow work on the B9 platform yet. There's, they, they flow very, very good. Yeah, they're, they're actually really nice, good flowing motors. Um, any updates for running EA AAA.3 ethanol, flex fuel, stage two TCU, stage three upgraded turbo, general software support? <laughs> it's all in there. Um, uh, other than we are working actively on that era of motor, um, Yes, uh, I don't have any specific updates for any of those questions, um, but it is it is yeah. it is in process. Um, we've got some E8, E8, E888.3 uh, software coming up in the next weeks. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, we're working on it. And, uh, we we created a renewed focus on mm -hmm. kind of the Mark Seven era tuning recently. So one eight and yeah, and we have one eight T tuning coming as well. For the MQB. Yep. Uh, we're almost out of time. Someone's saying that they're at 76,000 miles on their S4, 2019 S4, consistently tracked and driven hard and had no serious issues, normal coolant pump and an axle, no other issues. It's awesome. here. Yeah. yeah, the coolant pump, the, the water pump thing is just one of those. Someone's saying, what's the biggest failure on stage three B9 cars that you've seen so far? Honestly, I would say it's the same failure we've seen on factory stock engines which is pretty much like a failed piston. Yeah. And usually they crack or break in half or a chunk comes out of them. We haven't seen really any evidence that there's detonation or that the stage three tuning really has anything to do with it other than the increased load and stress from the power that's being made. So yeah. uh, the, the, the number of failures are exceedingly low as a function of percentage. Um, and I think once people start building motors, it will be a thing of the past. Yeah. 
And there's a, there's a chance that Audi will come out with some kind of fix as well. But it does appear that there's something going on with the factory pistons. And they're just not, you know, holding up like they should. Yeah, and second to that, I would say, you know, injectors um, and the injectors have, have, have contributed to have it. contributed to it, and they certainly have a, a lifespan. But nothing like catastrophic. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen any rods coming out of the side of the block or anything like that. I mean, it's the, the, not with the power. No, not the, not, the, not without some other mitigating. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw a motor that lost oil pressure entirely because of something was in the oil pan that did terrible things to the rods, but um, yeah. that was just a mechanical. I mean, that's nothing to do with the amount of power it was making. Uh, hey, I want to grab one more question. I think we're mm-hmm. over. The stage two put more stress on the engine turbo compared to stage one. Does 91 stage two safer than 91, 93, 93 stage one? I would yeah. always, if you're, if you're able to, I would say always run a higher octane. Yeah. Um, I, I am it's not a proponent of um, cheaping out on octane on turbo motors. Um, even if like the factory says you can put 87 in, I will, it's, it's not worth it in my opinion. Just the, the, the added, you know, safety, the benefit, um, you are going to have lower. You know, and then in the tuning world, if you're tuned for 93, you're going to generally have lower EGTs to go along with it. Your timing curve is going to be a little nicer um, mm-hmm. in that regard. Um, and to get the same amount of power, you, you generally are making less boost. So, um, yeah, it's usually a less stressed setup with more, uh, w- with better and better fuel in there. Stage one to stage two. I mean, that's, there's it's a, minimal. It's minimal. Yeah. There's not a lot of difference in there. Um, um, like we said, it's, that's for racing, uh, applications that you're going to get nearly all of the benefit from running an optimized stage one with the yeah. intake and intercooler. I don't think there's any, any evidence to show that stage two cars have a less or higher failure than stage no. one. I mean, they both would fail at the same rate if you were trying to account for failures. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I think we're out of time, unfortunately, but we did get through almost all the questions. So we had a lot coming in. So thanks guys. Great questions too, by the way. I appreciate uh, time and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Probably. Yeah. Next week. Sure. Sounds good.